Hi guys, today we're going to be exploring the amount of time it takes to drain a container with a hole at the bottom. The person who discovered the relationship between the height of the liquid above the hole and the velocity at which it goes out of the hole is named Evangelista Torricelli. Okay, so here I have the Wikipedia page on Torricelli theorem. So what he discovered was that the velocity that the stream of water exits the hole at is equal to the root of two times gravity times the height above the hole, as you can see from this picture right here. Using this equation, you could integrate it to find out the total amount of time it would take to drain the container. This first equation gives the amount of time that it takes to drain from the initial height of the water to the very bottom of the container. And the second equation shows the amount of time it takes to drain from one height to the other. The equation we're going to be focusing on is T is time equals A, which is the area of the cross section of the container over little a, which is the area of the hole, multiplied by the square root of 2 times the height of the water above the hole over gravity. There are two main parts of this equation. The first part being the area of the container over the area of the hole, and the second part being the square root of 2h over g. Let's first focus on the second part and how we get to there. To do this, we need to make this a over a equal to 1, so we can isolate this. This gives us a situation like this, where it's basically a pipe since the bottom is completely open. Now let's think about the motion of this liquid. Since each part of this water will be accelerated downwards at the force of gravity, we know that the water in this will act like a solid, since the whole thing will move uniformly down. Because of this, we can apply the laws of kinematics. Since we have acceleration as gravity, displacement as height, and we want time, we will use the equation displacement equals initial velocity times time plus one half a, which is acceleration, times time squared. Since at the beginning of the situation, the water will be still, we can get rid of this first part since the initial velocity will be equal to zero. This gives us x equals one half a t squared. Since we want to solve for time, we will need to isolate the t. Through the manipulation of this equation, we can see that the second part of the equation is just the amount of time it would take for a solid body to fall the distance of the height of the water above the hole. Now that we know the second part of the equation, this naturally brings up, what's the first part mean? To do this, we'll need to isolate the first part of the equation by factoring out the second part of the equation. And since we know the second part of the equation basically just means when the whole size is the same size as the container, we can use this to our advantage by splitting up the container into whole sized parts. This gives us a situation like this, where there are a bunch of columns with the same cross-sectional area as the whole, being one by one. Because these solid blocks are the same size as the whole, we know that the amount of time it takes to fall will be equal to the second part of the equation, being root 2 h over g per block. Assuming that as soon as a block falls out of the container, the next one will immediately start falling, this gives us root 2h over g multiplied by number of blocks. Since a container like this isn't split into blocks, we need to know how many number of blocks would be in this. To do this, you just divide the area of the container by the area of the hole. As you can see in this situation, the container is a 3x3, three three, giving us 3x3, three three, and the hole is a 1x1. One one. This gives us 
9 over 1, which is equal to 9. As you can see, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 blocks in this diagram. Therefore, the number of boxes is equal to the area of the container over the area of the hole. It's pretty clear at this point where we're going, since if we substitute this equation into number of blocks, we get a over a multiplied by root 2h over g, which equals time. As you can see, this equation is the same as this one up here. And through this, we know where the equation comes from. Thanks for watching.